Facebook. Well, hello, everyone. This is your friendly neighborhood pastor, Pastor Chris Johnson, coming to you from Christ the King Lutheran Church here in Escanaba, Michigan. We're getting ready for this weekend, which is the sixth Sunday after East, excuse me, the sixth Sunday of Easter. And we're again in John chapter 15. We heard the first few verses of John chapter 15 last week. Jesus said, I am the vine, the Father is the vine dresser, abide in me, and I in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Go and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. And we go from that into uh, something in a similar vein, uh, into in a similar vine with uh, our next pack of verses. We're looking this week at verses 9 through 17. And um, it's too bad that the lectionary cuts out the, the last half of, of 15, um, John chapter 15, because it, it just, you need it all, uh, but you, you can't have everything in one Sunday. But uh, regardless, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit in these um, these reflections on the weekend ahead. So without further ado, let me go ahead and read for you verses 9 through 17 from John chapter 15. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. So here we again get a good dose of Jesus talking about following the Father's commands, following his commands to love one another, to love as he has loved, a very specific form of love that um, Jesus unpacked throughout John's gospel, um, but he certainly got more explicit about it in John chapter 13 after washing the disciples' feet. And now in this farewell discourse, he unpacks uh, the full meaning of, of that and what it means to love him. And that means to be prepared to lay down your life as Jesus himself laid his life down for you. And so in here, there's that expectation. If, if, if you abide in Christ, if you abide in his love and he truly abides in you, if you are being pruned by the vine dresser, the father, if you are being made holy by the father's work, if you abide in his words, um, in Jesus's words that have cleansed you, that clean you, uh, what we heard last week, then you will inevitably um, and joyfully do what Christ commands. So in here is an implicit but also explicit call to obedience. What does faithful obedience for the Christian look like? And we get a, a dose of this also in uh, in our reading from John, First John, um, chapter five, where where the commandments are not burdensome. First um, John says. Uh, but they're a joy. And so to joyfully obey and follow and do all that God commands, not because we have to out of grudging obedience, but out of joyful, faithful obedience, because we love the Lord Jesus for all that he is and all that he has done for us. And so out of grateful response, out of a deep sense of gratitude, we will follow, we will lay down our lives, we will love as Jesus loved, we will love imperfectly because only he can love perfectly. But in this world, Christ calls us to love as he has loved us. And of course, um, to love one another is a very difficult thing to do because when you are called to love other people uh, and you get to know them and you spend time with them, um, some people can begin to, well, rub off, uh, rub off on you in, in ways that, uh, or you might rub off on them in ways that um, you begin to maybe know them too well or something. I don't know. And so it, it's just a really uh, powerful passage. Jesus talks about friendship here. I call you my friends. This really powerful language of, of I mean, he intimated it with, I am the vine, you are the branches, so that there's that there's that close connection. And Jesus even unpacks it further by saying, you are my friends um, if you do. And I know that you will do. I think there's an implicit um, knowing behind this. Jesus says, uh, it's not a condition of my friendship, your obedience, but it's an expectation of friendship with me that you will uh, inevitably obey. And you are my friends. And, and this is a powerful, lang powerful language, I think, certainly nowadays in a Facebook world where people have all sorts of friends that really don't 
check in with them, don't care about them too much, just want to see their pictures and so on and so forth. And so I think um, Jesus talking about friends, uh, I think, is an awesome thing in how we think about friendship, not only with our brothers and sisters in Christ, but that abiding friendship with our risen Lord and Savior. And obviously, the, the friendship we have with Christ is going to be very different from from. Uh, the friendship we have with with other people, um, but there is that call to, like we heard earlier in, in chapter 15, to grow in our faith, to grow in our friendship with God um, because of who he is, because of what he has done for us, but because he's God and, and he is our maker, he is our Lord, he is our savior, and, and who wouldn't want to be friends with God? And, and this will tie us into the next part of John 15, which we don't get this weekend, because Jesus says flat out, um, Get ready, because if you are friends with me, this is what it means for you. That the world will hate you, because the world hates me and my love and my friendship. And so he, he's got a warning in, in the last half of John, 5, of John chapter 15. Uh, and First John will pick up on this as well, that friendship with the world is enmity with God. You, you can't be friends with the world. Um, you cannot be friends with the darkness and also be friends with the light. You, you, you have to choose one or the other. There's no in-between. There's no sitting on the fence. And so Jesus says, if you're going to be my friend, and you are, he's telling the disciples, you are my friends because I lay my down my life for you. Get ready to be hated. Get ready to be scorned. Be, be ready to be mocked um, because you bear the name of Christ that you've been baptized, you've been chosen. As Jesus says, you didn't choose me, um, I chose you. And this is just a great, uh, wonderful thing that we get to proclaim in baptism. God chooses you in baptism. It's not about us choosing God, but God stoops down into our world and says, this child, you, my child, are all mine. Um, I choose you, just like he chose the disciples. So there's a whole lot going on here. Jesus will lead this into more talking more explicitly about the work and the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he alluded to that in John chapter 14. He'll unpack that more in John chapter 16. Um, we'll get a full dose of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday, which this year is May 20th. So we'll wait for that for another day. Um, but that's where Jesus is leading here, is that even though I am ascending to my Father, I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you as orphans. So this is just a great passage about love, about friendship with God, with one another, the call to follow, the call to obey, um, to obey God's commandments joyfully out of a, a heart full of gratitude because of who God is and what God has done for us. And we thank God not for his gifts. We do thank God for his gifts, but we thank God all the more for him. Um, as we read in, in Psalm 42, as a deer pants for the stream, so does my heart pant after you, O Lord. So that, that longing for God's presence, powerful, abiding presence in our life um, that will fulfill all our heart's deepest longings. So just a beautiful passage, um, but may you dig in this week, look at John 15 in depth, and get ready for the weekend ahead. It's sad to say that the season of Easter is almost done, but we're not quite there. Uh, and so may the Lord bless you and lead you and guide you as you read these words of our risen Savior and how beautiful they are, how beautiful a friend we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus. So God bless, take care, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.